just went back to school, hallelujah. Um, you know, I thought I was home for three months, so it's nice. I said the, the second, the first, second best time is when they come home, you know, from college. The first is when they leave to go back. So, <laughs> so I was a bit, yeah, quite tied up with that. Um, I, I say I'm busy, I'm just busy doing a lot of things. Um, busier than I would like to be at this stage in my life, I think. Um, I'm on the TDC board, Tourism, so that keeps me very busy. It's kind of almost like a job, sometimes almost like a full-time job. Um, so that takes a lot, a lot of my time. Because I find once I'm involved in something, I kind of get, you know, get very involved. So it's not something of just going to board meetings and that's it. Um, I you know, do businesses here and there. Um, I'm an, I think an entrepreneur by heart, you know, my spirit is that. Um, when people ask me to do things for them, I try to assist and you know in terms of um, support and charity, that sort of thing. So it keeps you busy. You find that from day to day my diary is like, you know, and I have to really say, okay, you see Wednesday, I'm not doing anything Wednesday. <laughs> To really just try and find time for myself um, not right now I find that I'm in that kind of in-between phase there are things that now I'm thinking I would like to be doing um, and just kind of whether it's working up the idea or working up the courage to do it so I'm in that in-between phase I'm trying to kick some things to the curb you know it's like I'm not doing any more of these things for the rest of the year um, so I'm trying to just clear out the clutter it's important to clear out the clutter, so I'm trying to um, I'm trying to do that right now. I at this point it's about I try to please myself <laughs> and not worry about people. I I couldn't care less about people, meaning people's opinions and things like that. So I try to do what I feel um, feel is right for me. Um, you know, you are who you are. I can only do things, I think, with um, integrity and, and, and honesty. So that's what I try to do. Um, well, that's what I do on a, on, a, on a daily basis or with anything I'm involved with. And that's what I sort of expect or look, look for in return, which, you know, these days, <laughs> it's more, it's a little hard to come by, but, you know. What's up? Well, you know, dealing with people with integrity, that's, um, God. I keep saying I don't recognize Trinidadians anymore sometimes because um, it's it's really very difficult you know people who operate from a, a place of integrity and honesty and you know it's all about the something else it's a lot of the something else going on um, so that makes it even a little more difficult when you're involved in things for me the worrying thing is that wow this is who we are now <laughs> like wow this is who we are um, but I know that's not who we are you know I know so we've got to get back to what I you know the, the, the qualities and you know that, that defined for me um, you know being being Trinidadian because it's just shifted so much and maybe it's just the new um, the new way and the new generation but I don't think so you know I don't think so I think things have just gotten away from us a bit and we need to just kind of pull it in. It can't be about the dollar every day, every day, you know, it's got to be more than that. It's got to be, it's got to be more than just the, um, the dollar and the, um, which I say it, but I don't like to eat the food kind of syndrome that everyone talks about. It has got to be more than that. There must be more than that. I don't know. I, I, I mean, one thinks the answers are easy and simple, but then again, you realize it's not. It's quite complex. Um, I don't know, you know, the talk about get together, come together. So much of it is just trust. <laughs> it's just the words being, you know, and then again, I don't know what that means. I don't think one, you need to come together and get together for things to start going in the direction it should be going. And I think individually, everyone can, um, can contribute in their own way. I don't think it's a come together, get together kind of thing. Um, I think we've just got to decide um, that this isn't what it's about. As I said, it's not about the um, what's in it for me, you know, because it's, it's too much of that. It's too much of that. Much, the focus is on, on that all the time. God, the focus is on, oh God, get rich, get, you know. Um, at, 
The thing too, I wonder how much of the, well, I mean, you, you must be impacted by what goes on outside because, you know, the age we're in now. Um, but, you know, so many things we pick up. That's not necessarily um, what is the best things um, for us here. We kind of between a Hollywood, a Hollywood um, phase, and you know, it's about Hollywood. It's glamour. It's rich. It's this. It's this. It's the. I don't know if that's what you know Modern. keeps you happy and you know floats your boat fine. But that's a treadmill. Huh? <laughs> that's quite a treadmill to be on. Um, I'm a feminist, not a word you hear often, <laughs> looked up at me, I'm, I'm a feminist, I've always been, um, I'm, my interest in things that affect women, um, affect girls, women, so I think that's something that I don't think people know about me, but very much so, um, a, a feminist, um, an entrepreneur, as I said earlier, by I realized I didn't set out to be an entrepreneur, but I realized that, okay, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I think my experience at Bowen Marine, when people ask me, What's, what are you most proud of? Uh, that's what I'm most proud of in my life. Not so much the Miss Universe thing, as much as it is um, going into that business and being a boat builder. I became a boat builder. I'm a boat builder. I know how to build boats. Um, and for me, that is... Um, what has been the um, the thing that I've been most proud of? How I went into an industry that I knew absolutely nothing about, didn't even know what a mold was, um, and an industry that's extremely male. It's a male industry. It's you know the business is owned by men. The, the um, item is used primarily by men, um, and I did that for 14 years, and I was really very proud of of you know what I did transforming the business in small ways that I thought I did. Um, so that is my, for me, what I am most, um, my achievement, um, you know, the universe thing comes, <laughs> is after. But you know, I am a risk taker. I'm, I am a risk taker. And um, I realized I had nothing to lose. I had nothing to lose. Um, at the end of the day, it was a business that I had. I could have sold it, I chose not to. And there were people there, you know, expecting I would have sold it because the thing is, oh God, why the beauty queen know about building boats? <laughs> that was that was funny because that is actually what was felt and said. Um, but I had nothing to lose, um, and I just took it a day at a time, a day at a time. And I'm a hard worker. When I'm involved in something, I work hard at it, and I took it a day at a time. And I am happy that what, 20 years later or more. Um, probably yeah, 25 years later um, I've got staff you know staff I worked with at the company who worked with along with me that are some of my best you know my best friends I can call on you know if I need something done or you know anything I can call on them um, so what was the transition like it was it was hard because people didn't expect me to stay with it um, it was tough it was tough and it was the beauty queen in the boat building business and they just didn't think that I would have you know I have this story not a story something that happened in that industry it's a very you know it's high priced and, and the materials you put into it is very very costly so that you you know when you do a quotation it's terms of payments depending on the progress of the um, the manufacturer of the boat and um, I call the client in and I says okay your boat is out the mold um, you know if you can come in because come in and see because it it's time for a next payment <laughs> so I said to him god I'm so glad you came because you know um, you know I'm my, my cash flow needs it and he looked at me and said Penny you do cash flow <laughs> I never and this is a top business manner really I never forgot that because I'm like okay yeah how the hell do you think the business runs you know um, but that's just it that they didn't first of all it's a woman was I was a woman in that very male industry and um, again you never not that you want to I don't ever want to but the beauty queen um, handle that stays with you 
and for and you're sort of defined in people's minds it has nothing to do with me but in people's minds you're defined that way so i guess that he just couldn't wrap his head around that i really was running the business i mean you know all you do cash flow i'm like yeah okay <laughs> as long as you're here to, to make the payment that <laughs> doesn't matter but it was um it was interesting i did that for 14 years and i finally decided it was time for me to move on um because my daughter was very young and i didn't think it's something i would have kept doing you know people pass businesses on to their to their um to children um so it was just after 14 years i thought it was time for me to um to move on and decide what was next but listen i don't um let me not make light of it huh, because that winning Miss Universe 37 years ago <laughs> 37 years ago that was significant you know that was very significant I watch um, I don't do it often but when I watch shows now and I'm like wow and you see so many different colors you see different complexions you see and there's a heavier um, African or colored presence and I'm like, wow, I wonder if these ladies know. You know. I wonder if they know because, you know, now 37 years later, you've come into something and you just assume this is how it always is. Um, but it was breaking ground. It really was breaking ground. You were the first. The first, yeah, the first person. Um, I now call it the first person of color because um, people say the first black person yes but I call it the first person of color because I'm I, I say and in Trinidad one has to understand what I'm saying before me there was no Miss India either winning Miss Universe so when I say the first person of color it then introduced for you know the different ethnicities and different you know across colors of the world, colors of the world. and I say it so that here where we you know the different ethnicities and the different races that so plays such an important role in everything in Trinidad, I say it so that all the different um, races can realize, um, yeah, I was the first. It was not Botswana, nor was it Miss India. It was Miss Trinidad and Tobago. So you've got to understand, you know, you have to understand um, and appreciate that. It was, it was us. It was not all the different things we, you know, we latch on to. Um, yes, we did. And it was... It, yeah, it was important. I mean, I remember, I say I, I'm grateful to one um, contestant, Miss Bermuda, Connie Frith. I'll never forget the name because Connie started to make a lot of noise um, during the pageant because they were not taking photos of the people of color. We kind of were there to make up numbers. So I'm ever grateful to Connie for putting the spotlight on us because perhaps without that spotlight, the spotlight would not have been on me. So I'm grateful to Connie, and I just always have this memory of Miss um, Liberia. And this week, Liberia was in the news with you know the Ebola, and I'm thinking about Miss Liberia. Um, and I watched the tape, and she was just she broke down sobbing because that is then I realized the importance of it. You know how important it was um, to the, the the women of color who and uh, generally um, who were participating. So I don't. Um, I don't, you know, kind of play it down at all. I don't play it down. Um, because it it's, wasn't it's, any, it wasn't just any Miss Universe title. It was. It was Miss. The first. The first, yes, and it was. Um, it was a Miss Universe title, you know, and the first. First. Colored yeah, the first person of I yeah, you know, for many years people said which I did as well, the first black. But as I said, I put it as the first person of color because this way I think it encompasses. Um, different groups and different ethnicities that don't necessarily relate to the you know the black and african um african label i don't know, <laughs> I don't know. um the worst time i don't know either um it's been a long time it's been a long time in trinidad and i say if you god if you survive a trini audience believe me you're good <laughs> we are very very difficult um, and hard judges. Um, there were some times when it was really just not good in Trinidad, because um, that's who we are. We kind of test people. There were times I did, you know, go through that. Um, but it, at the I end of the day, um, just negative. You know, we tend to be kind of so sometimes negative. negative. Yeah, there, there's that. You know, there's that. Um, 
there's that there, there, there's that um but you know you learn i've learned you know i've learned i've learned i tell people some people say how do you do it you know because you go out and um you re you really have to understand in your head um of carving that space to be your own person you really you do um you have to do that and i have because it's a small it's really a small space we're in so to be a personality in a small space is not necessarily a simple or easy thing um but i don't i've never changed my lifestyle i don't feel oh i'm this or i'm that so i've got to be here or there me i don't have to be anywhere <laughs> except where i choose to be and i can only be me i can only be me and that's what makes me comfortable i think that's what um to a degree without tapping my patting myself on the, on the back that's what endears me to members to the public that i'm just i me i'm wherever i need to be i embrace people you know um so i don't you know i don't have that aloof thing that people expect you to have as, as a um as a personality um but i'm not sure i can answer that as yet my best and um i'm not sure i'm i can or ready to answer that as yet oh. yeah i grew up on oxford street i am a port of spain person <laughs> Yes, I grew up on Oxford Street, um, and you know that area was really so rich, rich in culture. Right up the street in Chennai Alley was Sally, Salina, the, you know that mass band. A few blocks down the road was um, George Bailey. Yeah, Despers um, in the back there. So I grew up in that, um, but that culture all around. Um, so I grew up in Oxford Street. Um, I. You know, most families at that time who were lower, lower middle, um, they struggled to give you what was, you know, better, better than they had. My parents left to seek a better life when we were very young, my sister and I, when we were young. So I grew up with my grandmother. She passed um, very early and then my aunts took care of me. Um, and I tell my daughter, I said, listen, I remember, because we went to Bishop's from junior school. And in those days, you know, you're looking for school fees. So I said, listen, Sasha, I remember the days when I remember my grandmother and my aunt pawning their gold bracelet <laughs> to pay school fees, to keep us in Bishop's, because that's what they wanted for us, you know? Um, so I didn't want for anything that way, and although my parents weren't here, I never felt that I was deprived of anything. I grew up with a wonderful, family, my aunts, my grandmother, and then my aunts. Um, and I think perhaps my independence comes from that because I grew up in a house where the women, my aunts always worked. They were always their own people. They always had their um, their careers. Um, so I think that's where that comes from, growing up with a family of women just always doing things. Um, so it was a pretty good, pretty good. Um, I left her when I was 13 and went to live with my parents in the States. Um, that was traumatic, I guess, and um, having to make adjustments. You know, it's a whole different ball game then. I also now tell my daughter, Sasha, please, I've been working since I'm 13. <laughs> you, know? you go across there and you're in school and you're working part time because you must. You know, these are things that you must do. And I think that has made me, um, I'm better off for it. You know, so I, you know, migrated and lived the typical, I think, um, um, immigrant, you know, kind of, of thing, wanting to do better, wanting to, you know, just always feeling you have an, an edge. I always felt I had an edge. I don't know why. I always felt through school, high school, and everything that I had something a little, um, a, yes, I always felt I had that edge. Um, and just working a lot. I worked a lot. I worked, started university, had to leave, continue to work, because by then I'm on my own, I'm paying rent, I'm doing these things. Went back to university, um, and that's when I came back to Trinidad. How did this university happen? You know, I guess people have heard this story over and over, but accidentally I was in, I was again, a thinking I'm this business person and I came back to Trinidad and I have to say I was the only one who came back to Trinidad my father thought I was crazy <laughs> he thought I was crazy um, 
and I wanted to open a business and I thought if I got involved in a local show people would it would give me an entree and um, recognition and that is how I got into I was never that was the furthest thing from my from my mind it's not you know young girls grow up thinking they want to be that was just not in I was not on the cards for me it's not that was that was not part of my reality I didn't grow up with that as part of my reality I mean, no, no, and actually when I did look at the shows, when I lived in the States and I looked at it, again, you were looking at five, eight, blonde, you didn't think that was something that you could be part of, or you, yeah, so it was, it was, this was never part of my reality, it's just um, something that happened. If you believe that you, things happen as they must, that's what I believe, you know, that things just happen as they, as they should happen, yes. I'm never afraid to do things. I mean, I'm not ridiculously stupid to do dangerous things, but I'm never, um, I'm never afraid to do something. I'm never afraid to do something. I am. Um, I take it. Yeah. Although on my bucket list is skydiving, and I find as the years go by, I'm a little okay. <laughs> but that's on my bucket list. There's skydiving. A list. Just that. <laughs> huh? Just that for now. Just that. But on my bucket list yeah now I look back and um, what, what would I have done differently up until winning Miss Universe nothing because <laughs> it led me to that um, I think there are some opportunities that I missed um, there are opportunities that I missed right after the Miss Universe you know pageant um, I missed the opportunities of um, media television there were those opportunities open to me that i didn't take because i was tired i was tired of um the year i was a very busy miss universe and i was tired at the end of it you know i mean i'd seen all of hollywood da, 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 and i was just tired and i wanted to come back but those opportunities were open to me then and i didn't take the opportunities in the states, in the states yeah um i had the opportunity i remember bob barker who he was the MC of the show but remember for years he had the prices right he was the Bob called me and offered me something on the show um, opportunities to do um, television in the States and 33 years ago black women on television in the States was you had one I remember there was one in the New York area Melba Tolliver I remember her name um, again it was not something that you saw now we don't realize it's so standard now but 30 something years ago it was not um, so that's an opportunity I missed so it's been a good life yes um, but I kind of look back at some of those opportunities and um, I would probably would have done I would have done that differently and yeah I'm sure I would have um, I'm a proud mother. I think I've been a good mother. <laughs> um, parenthood came late. Parenting came late for me. Um, one, yes, one beautiful daughter. Um, so it came late, but um, it's an experience that um, was a good one, or is a good one, continues to be a good one. Um, I know I am. You know, you feel. I'm feeling that there's something else. Just yeah, I don't know what it is and I keep saying God you know you, I need to know what it is but I'm just feeling that there's something else you know whether I should look for it or whether I should just wait for it to happen I don't I don't know but there's just a feeling uh, which is why I'm trying to declutter right now I'm trying to declutter all the other stuff and um, you know hopefully then just decide um, what it is going forward um, yeah, yeah. Um, I won Miss Photogenic, and when they told me I'd won Miss Photogenic, I'm like, yeah, 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 right, okay. You know, they gotta give the black people something. <laughs> 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 so you know, it's a charity. So I didn't want it. I didn't. Want it. <laughs> I mean, that I could give it back, but um, I just thought, hmm, yeah, okay. Um, so then I guess I started feeling a little more confident um, I went into the show on the night feeling very confident or feeling I'd have been in the 12 I don't know why I just you know you feel something I felt it um, and on that stage you know it's about your moment 
the next night I might not have won that. It's about the moment and the energy that's going with you on, at that time. Because I was on that stage and I was gliding. Something was just moving me. Um, so that, yeah, that, that night was my, was my moment. And then towards the end, you know, the little, um, not the little, the common sense and the maturity kicks in because I started evaluating everything. And um, I had taken third, we then called three, and then we were down to the two. And I started evaluating it. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, okay, you got this gorgeous young blonde lady here, and you've got me. <laughs> you can't compare the two, you either like this or you like this, all right? You can't, there's no comparison. Um, so I knew I was on even playing ground then. I knew I was even. Um, and then, well, you're in the business, so you would know, you know of Gordon Parks? Gordon Parks is a fa very famous um, African-American photographer. And um, yeah, he was a judge, Gordon Parks was a judge. And he got up when it was just the two of us. And I was just focused on the audience. I was focused on the audience and the judges. And I saw Gordon get up and I just said to myself, huh, he either wants to get a nice photo of me or he wants to capture history. I mean, you're standing there competing and this is all going through your head. So that is, for me, I think the maturity, because I was you know, older than most of the other women. So I think the maturity at that stage kicked in because I started to evaluate <laughs> and evaluate how this thing should go, you know? Um, so it did go, but it still is your OMG, would have been my OMG moment because you worked it all out towards the end. You worked it all out that this is what should happen, but it does happen. You know, when it happens, yeah, it would be that. So you're very young, spiritual. Um, I don't know what that word means, you know. <laughs> No, I find it so overused. Am I very spiritual? I'm tuned in. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm tuned in. I'm... Yeah, I... Yeah, sometimes I know when the vibes are not... Because, yeah, you talk about it. So like, yes, yeah, I'm... I'm tuned in. I'm tuned in. Yes, I think I am. I'm tuned in. I'm... Yes, I respect. I respect. So, uh, you know, I, I can't say I'm religious, that I follow this religion, that I'm not say I, I won't be a hypocrite and say I'm religious, um, but I respect, and for me that's important. Respect in terms of? I respect their, you know, being um, a, a supreme being and or supreme a spirit. Um, I respect that. I have respect for that. I respect good versus evil. I, I respect, yes, I respect that. Thank you.